Hello everyone, this is Toby with Birdsong Studios. Thank you so much for joining me here back on the channel. Today we will be looking at messages for the water signs around the energies of the full moon in Leo, which will occur on February 5th or 6th, dependent upon where you are in the world. So if you have your sun, moon, or rising sign in a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, you may find that there are messages within this reading that resonate for you. Um, in addition to or simultaneously with the full moon, there is a T-square between the sun, moon, and Uranus. And so um, Uranus is um, often associated with or symbolic of lightning, electricity, innovation, um, unexpected revelations. Um, I'm also getting a sense of unexpected clarity that can go along with the illumination of the full moon. So you may find um, that things kind of come to a crescendo point for you with, around this full moon or in the days following. So as I was meditating upon your energy water signs for this full moon in Leo, I was getting a, um, a distinct message about the number 369. And although initially I interpreted that in relation to the 369 uh, frequency um, and how that can be used as a healing frequency, what then came through was uh, my guides clarified for me and it was more in relation to the manifestation technique that uh, Nikola Tesla created or developed around the number 369. He had many theories as to the significance of that number sequence and that they were really keys to unlocking higher dimensions. And that came through very strongly for your the meditation prior to beginning here. Um, so we'll see if that comes up in the reading, but something to keep in mind um, to maybe do a little bit of research. The, the manifestation technique, um, ooh, I'm getting some fast energy now. So the manifestation technique, let's slow it down a little bit, um, basically was to create, to take three um, distinct goals, create mantras or affirmations, or a mantra or affirmation for each one, and then repeat each one six times and make sure that the duration that you are repeating each mantra is nine seconds. And the mantra should be worded as if you have already, um, you are already experiencing what it is that you're speaking about. You have already received it. Um, so no future tense type uh, verbiage, but something that is um, present tense in your wording. Um, so there's something in that for you, water signs. Okay, so let's look. We're going to use the Life Soul Vision Oracle by Romy Weiser. Really beautiful deck. Um, we're going to use this to start out with to get our overall message for water signs around the full moon in Leo. And we have the Queen of Air, light language. And I'm getting this sense of connection to other dimensions as we talked about with the number 369. Um, this is number four. Um, the Queen of Air is associated with, or not associated, is associated with connection to the higher realms, um, just as we talked about. And so, I'm getting a sense that that 369 frequency may help you connect into um, the higher dimensions to, I'm also getting this, um, I'm hearing astral projecting. So if that's something that you have been exploring or have been interested in, um, and now the sensation in my hands are telling me that's something that you may want to look into further to take action in that area. Um, that you may uncover, um, actually I'm getting that, uh, 
the ability to connect with your guides or the information that you're going to need to move forward through this time is already being downloaded um, that as you dream you may be astral projecting into other timelines um, no uh, other lifetimes to gather the information and wisdom from those time those times um, for those from those soul lifetimes into your current lifetime um, it may come through then as light language for you. You may, as you are entering or moving through this process, yeah, I'm seeing these ancient lands back here. Um, your The angels and uh, your guides, your cosmic team are helping you in this process. They are guiding you in this process. But there is this um, sense that if you're hearing sounds or words that you may not be able to make out if you're recalling these type of instances from your dream state um, this is you receiving this light language um, through the dream state which there are there are DNA activations um, included in that Ooh, wow that was a that was a lot that's really beautiful you guys okay um, I've done just one for the other signs, but I'm feeling there's something else to this. Okay, for the water signs. Please, Spirit. Thank you. Alchemize the ache. Water signs. Did you get this before with the new moon. I think you did. And look, it's card 31, which... Um, oh my gosh, I can't even... Um, the words have stopped coming and now it's just all this energy. Um, which uh, adds to four. <laughs> There's another word that I usually use, but it's not coming to me. But this sense of, and I'm recalling from a prior reading, um, and I think it was for you, Water Signs, um, turning to that the sunflowers, let's see, it, the direction of the sunflowers, the direction the sunflowers face is important. How does this connect to this? There's so much purple in both of these, first of all. So I'm getting a lot of crown chakra activations. And this is that connection to the higher realms we were talking about. And I'm, uh, I'm really drawn to the amount of light in this card as well. See the light in that card? And how it's beaming down onto these sunflowers. I'm always almost getting a sense that you water signs are the sunflowers. And that this light is um, representative of the, the light language activations that you are receiving. And it may be, may be during your waking hours, but I'm also getting the sense of it coming through right before sunrise for some reason. Um, and this is helping you to this alchemization of um, your past histories of past lifetimes of this fully integrating all that you have learned and experienced and the wisdom gained over these past lifetimes to bring it together into this lifetime in order to then shine it on others. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to the tarot now, water signs. We're going to look at, I've been using um, a spread that I created for these readings. We're looking at the light aspect, the shadow aspect, which works beautifully with what we have here so far. And then we look at 
the yin and the yang aspects where there is invitation to surrender, where there is invitation to take action. And then we will look at key factors in two groups. Wow, okay, there's a lot of energy in this for you. I'm feeling this light frequencies coming through. Um, you may feel it in your calves when you are grounding or doing your grounding work. If you are not doing grounding work, I highly recommend it because this, um, these light act activations may have you feeling very um, lightheaded and get, um, cause some headaches and some ear ringing um, and grounding. Um, feet in the soil, in the grass, if you can find any, but feet on the ground, bare feet, if you can, if the weather's not too terribly cold, but even for a short amount of time, is going to help you ground so that you are um, receiving these um, activations in without feeling too chaotic internally in the energy. Okay, so we're going to look at the light aspect. We have the Hermit, and that gives me, again, that sense of grounding, that's Virgo energy. We're going to look at the shadow aspect here then, too. And you may, uh, this, again, speaks to, again, the need to ground, the need to re allow yourself the space to receive these activations, this wisdom, um, all this information that's been gathered by your soul across lifetimes and it's meant to be brought forth and integrated in this lifetime and look at how he has this um, the, the wand here with the light his scepter or his yeah it looks like a scepter but there's that light that's beaming down on him I'm getting something about teeth too um, that's odd. Um, so you may feel some sort of, I think that goes along with the head pressure that can come along with these activations. Um, giving yourself the space and the time to sit and allow it to move through you is going to be really important in this process. And in the shadow, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Again, another grounding energy or another earth energy. And this is Mercury and Virgo. Uh, I get this sense of feeling that, um, okay, Virgo energy is really strong here. So there may be something that happened in Virgo season last year, but I'm really feeling like a sense of this kind of coming to culmination with the Ten of Pentacles in Virgo season of this year. So end of, uh, no end of August through, you know, late September 19th, 20, 20th, 21st, wherever it falls this year. Um, whew, and I'm feeling really ungrounded again. So the need to ground is so important in this time for you water signs. Um, but you're going to get this sense of completion and of, and of um, the rewards of this in the tangible, physical, touchable sense. Um, in I, I believe it, it's looking like in Virgo season of this year. Um, so allow yourself to be in this process, um, and I feel like this is showing up in the shadow side because of this sense of, and this is that rushing energy that I was getting earlier. Um, of wanting to move through it quickly to get to this alchemized state, to get to this state where everything is integrated, but we have to understand that there's this is a process and this is massive amounts of knowledge and activations that are coming through for you during this time. Nine, September. Okay, so it will be September because we talked about three, six, nine. So I'm getting it as far as the timing aspect too. Something coming into play in March and then in June and then in September. And it looks, it's looking like September is going to be the culmination of this process for you. 
So allowing yourself to move through this water signs and understanding that there will be physical representations of the work that you've done coming to fruition at the conclusion of this particular process. So not getting caught up in the timing aspect of it so much, but understanding and so allowing your, your shadow to rush through this process or be mm, too, too emotionally invested in the timing of it is what I'm getting. Um, I've given you some timing here. I don't often get that detail of timing in the readings for the collective or for a collective. Um, but understanding too that we each have our own path. And so for some of you that will be accurate. For some of you it might n not be. But I'm getting also this key that goes back to the manifestation process that we talked about initially as well. When we are both in a state of manifesting from a place of trust and knowing and belief that these things that we are that we desire that are our goals are already in place they are already there for us on an energetic level all because otherwise we wouldn't feel so aligned to them um we have to be in a state of allowing as well and a state of receiving as well which now takes us to the yin energy but the um which is going to be here but um oh there was more to that let's see um so if we're pushing too hard on this process because a key part of manifesting is then in the releasing of how it of that goal, how it shows up in your life. And this came up with another group of signs that I did just recently and I, it might have been earth signs, it was earth signs, and here we have earth. Um, the importance of surrendering to the process. So I'm getting this sense that the timeline I gave you is valid, however, if we are pushing it, energetically speaking, if we are too attached emotionally, which then connects to our energy, if we are too attached to a certain date, then we're actually blocking forward movement. We're actually blocking the flow and that can extend this length of time. Okay, so in the surrendering, we have judgment. And judgment came up in the earth sign reading too. I'm pretty sure it did. Um, so we have 20 for judgment. And I just get this sense of the need to surrender to the To the divine timing of it all. There's more to it though. Let me, let me see. What else do we have for the yin energy for water signs and spirit? Wow, there's so much energy coming through. It's, it feels a little wild though. I think that's going to be the need to embrace the hermit energy to and again the grounding to allow it to ground down in and not just run Ooh. not let it um, not become so att attached to how intense it feels that then we uh, assign emotions to it as well temperance temperance came through with the earth signs also 
and here we have balance. And I'm getting this, this sense of your guides, the spirit, um, the angels in particular, just as we talked about here, they are guiding you on this path. So turning over your, and this is, sorry about that y'all, my battery died. Okay, so um, turning over control, this is where the surrendering comes in is what I was saying. As Just as we talked about to begin with the light activations, the light language, you are being heavily guided, protected, and led through this process by spirit, by your angel team, your cosmic team, your guides, and this is what you're being asked to surrender to. To have patience through this process, to understand there are going to be ebbs and flows, but to also allow your team to make these judgment calls, to trust in them and to know that they are working for your highest good. They have you, they're overseeing all of this. Okay, so what are we looking at for the Yang energy then please spirit for water signs for this full moon in Leo. And see, even just in saying that, that sense of chaos that I was feeling, that really um, hectic energy has been relieved. And this is where you're going to find relief. Relief is in letting go of any sense of control of this process. In, in trust and full faith in your guides, the angels, your team. I'm getting that there's two, uh, I was gonna say one more, but two more. For the water signs, please. You are very much protected. I'm feeling Archangel Michael is heavily, heavily, heavily working with you in this. We have the moon and we have the King of Wands. So the King of Wands is very passionate. He's very much a leader. He or she, um, I say he is divine masculine energy, but it's not gender specific. So the, the King of Wands also has dragons on his cloak. And I have Sagittarius and Scorpio energy here. Interesting. Um, and then we have the moon, which is card 18 which is nine. We talked about the 369 frequency, the 369 number sequence. So from these two cards, I'm getting this sense of, um, because the moon is associated with um, Pisces normally um, okay so there are two things coming through the first is um, this representation of what we'll be receiving through this full moon in Leo okay see how we have this disc up here and the moon's light is shining through it just like we have in the hermit. See this in his scepter that we talked about? So this is the, the light language, the, the light uh, activations that are coming through. Not directly from the moon, but these are the, um, the activations that are coming through at this time. I'm seeing this in the circle in the, the moon card here as more of a portal. 
the other portion of this the this part of the message is the understanding when to being the leader in your own experience understanding when to take action and when to rest um, when to be the hermit and when to be the one who moves forward courageously and um, with a great deal of confidence and having a great deal of confidence and self-assuredness in knowing when it's a right time for you on those two different pathways um, which I feel are represented with the dog and the wolf here. Almost a time of wildness versus a time of domestication. And I don't mean wildness to an extreme, but um, Hmm. Let's get one more for that. The moon. The spirit for the water signs. The moon, please. The emperor. <laughs> yeah, it's this sense of having great self-confidence and knowing when to make moves and when not to when to move forward, when to hold back, when to be a little bit reserved, when to advance, when to retreat, but doing it with absolute confidence in your decisions because you are, and he has the two staffs as we have behind these, the, the wolf and the dog. They're not exactly the same, but they are very similar. I'm feeling like this emperor energy is, and this is Aries energy with the emperor. So um, we have March, April. Um, I feel like what it, what you are gained through this full moon is going to then. Oh, okay. Equinox. The equinox in March keeps coming up for me. It feels very much like this big. All of the lessons, just as we've talked about here, for you guys, the, uh, water signs, this feels like everything that you've gained from past lifetimes, as well as what has come through, especially in the last few months, um, is coming to this integrated point um, to, the to the degree that you're actually able to implement all of this wisdom. And so with the equinox in March, that is also the point in time when we begin Aries season. And so I feel like this is the critical point in time for you, water signs. Um, it marks the end of Pisces season, um, which is the moon, and then the emperor, which is Aries season. And then here's the moon card again. So this is, this is definitely going to be a very important time frame for you. And what is gained during that trans, transitionary period is going to allow you to actually step into this emperor energy in your life. This, the, the self-assuredness, the confidence, the um, I get this sense of faith in oneself without question. It's really beautiful energy. There is so much confidence in just bursting forth of the solar 
plexus energy, which is represented, of course, in the Emperor card, but also in this Ten of Pentacles, also in the Sunflowers, and here in the Judgment card. Okay, so let's look at your the key factors internally and externally. I shuffled these ahead of time, but let's do one or two more. And there's that Eight of Wands that I saw in the, the pre-shuffle also. Oof. Fingers. I was sensing the Eight of Wands more in regards to manifestations than I was in, like, communication um, when I saw it earlier for you water signs. It goes back to what we talked about, about the, the 369 manifestation technique. I would definitely look into that and work on that through this process. I think you'll find it to be very, very helpful. And it's a very simple manifestation technique as well. So one that... Um, even when you're feeling, if you're feeling that uh, hectic energy um, that may come through with these activations, um, I, there's an importance of understanding that the energy itself is not hectic. Okay, my guides are correcting me on this. It's that, it, it's the sensations in your body in reaction to it that we may interpret as hectic. It's because it's a lot of energy that's moving through you and it's different than what you have been accustomed to even when connecting to these higher um, dimensions and connecting with your guides with the, the astral plane, with the um, angelic plane is what I'm hearing even your cosmic family. So it's going to feel different in your body. That doesn't mean that the energy is um, hectic in itself, which is what we they were referring to, and I wasn't 100% clear on earlier, in attaching significance to this process emotionally. If we then label it as hectic as I've done, so I, my apologies, it feels hectic. But if we say it's hectic energy, then can you s feel the difference in how that um, vibration is when I say that. So the feeling of it being hectic is just a sensation. It's temporary. But the energy itself is not hectic. The energy is very directed. It's very focused. But it's very large as well. There's a lot to it. It's very intense in some ways. And it needs to be, our body um, is going to need time to integrate it, to allow it for the activations to come online is what I'm hearing. So it's very important that you not label or attach meaning to these sensations outside of these are activations that are coming from forth for my highest good. These are activations that include wisdom of my ancestors. Well, wisdom of me, wisdom of my past lifetimes, wisdom of my soul. That's going to be really important to do. And that is also going to help ease some of the um, anxiety that might come along. Because when we've when we feel a sensation in our body, we naturally, as humans, will label it according to what we have felt with that sensation in the past. That doesn't mean that the source of the sensation is the same. We're just going on what we have previously understood. So allowing ourselves this time for reflection and also allowing ourselves to trust in spirit through this process is going to be very important and that's going to help move the process along because when we start attaching labels based on prior experience it's going to actually block our process it's going to slow it down because it's not because then
we are energetically blocking those activations from integrating within our DNA, within our body. Okay, I hope that made sense. Okay, we have the Eight of Cups. These are internal factors. Again, we've got the full moon here, and the Eight of Cups indicates a moving away from something. We've received some clarity, and so we are moving away from something. And it may be this exact process that I just talked about. Just because, just because something feels the same in the body, or we... Just because something we're feeling in our body reminds of us of a past experience doesn't mean that the source is the same. We have the Ace of Cups, a new emotional experience. And we have this eye, and I'm getting this third eye energy. So really... Are allowing our intuition to guide us in this and the need to take a much higher perspective as well and we have the moon again <laughs> something has been hidden that is being revealed under this full moon and it may just be that we've been blocking some forward progress because we are attached to how we have labeled emotions and sensations in our body in, based on past experiences. Okay, those are our internal factors. Let's look at key external factors, please, Spirit. Four of Pentacles. Holding on to something. Four of Cups. Gosh, two fours. And we have this Queen of Air right from the beginning, which was a four, as is Alchemize the Ache. And this is what we're this is what we're alchemizing then. This new emotional experience is coming forth through this transmutation. And that I believe we've we've hit on the key here is that um, the key is in how we think about and the words we assign to these sensations, to our emotions, and how much we attach to them. Yeah, and it has to do with funny, we have this sense of It has to do, we've got the Two of Cups here, we've got the Four of Cups, we've got the Four of Pentacles. And so what I'm getting is this has to do with interpersonal relationships in particular. This is going to have a great, all of this is internal work, okay? All, everything else is internal, internal work. However, what you, the processes you've been going through in, up until this point, in regards to interpersonal relationships, there's I feel that there's going to be a big impact in interpersonal relationships and how you label or assign meaning to or attach to emotions and sensations around relationships. Okay? Because I've got... The Four of Pentacles, which is um, holding on to resources, right? Um, 
being overly cautious with resources. A fear of, it comes from a sense of um, lack, um, a, uh, a sense of detriment is what I'm getting, but that's not the really, uh, the word I'm feeling, um, but overall a sense of lack. And then we have the Four of Cups, which again, is this sense of lacking, but you have God's Spirit Source handing you this cup and yet not reaching out for it and almost holding on to these empty cups. See how these empty cups are set aside? Um, and I get this, this feeling that the, the figure is, no, I'm going to hold on to these empty cups and I'm not going to take this full cup from you, Spirit, because I'm familiar with these empty cups. They're mine, just as these pentacles are mine. I'm not going to... This sounds kind of harsh, and I don't mean for it to sound so harsh, you guys, but um, it's staying in one's comfort zone. And, and I don't necessarily mean on an external plane. I'm talking about internally what even um, what we've experienced in the past is what we're comfortable with because we kind of know what to expect from it, right? We've experienced it. I've been through this situation. I understand. I think I understand what this means. I've assigned meaning to it. I've been through this emotional process or emotional experience. And so I have a story around it that I can grasp, right? Because I've created that story. Um, I understand that if this hap if A happens, then I'm going to feel this way. If B happens, then I'm going to feel this way. And if those things happen, then I will react in a certain way. I hope this is making sense. Um, However, when we're doing that, we're not leaving ourselves open to this, these new experiences because we've already prejudged, pre-labeled how something is going to come about. And in doing so, we've assigned so much meaning to these sensations. And when I say sensations, I mean physical sensations in the body. How do you feel physically in a given situation or with a certain person or in a particular environment. How do you feel in your body? And really getting in touch with that. And that's where this earth energy is coming into is what into play as well and the very and the need to be grounded. Moving into your making uh, making sure that you are in touch with your body. And does my stomach feel anxious and knotted and tight? Does my chest feel tight? Or do I feel light? Do I feel like like kind of floaty because I'm happy? And although that's ungrounded, that's, that's the opposite of the tightness, right? So what am I feeling on this spectrum? And how have I labeled those things? What have I attributed those to in the past? Because we can feel, here's an example, we can feel um, butterflies in our stomach out of nervousness, but we can also feel butterflies in our stomach out of excitement, right? We can feel a sense of heaviness um, in something stressful that is um, stressful in a burdensome way, or we can feel a sense of heaviness or responsibility and stress in something that is very meaningful for us. Um, if we have a goal that we're working towards, yes, it's going to feel burdensome in some ways, but the over in, if we drill down in a specific area there, oh, I'm not being, let me give you an example. If you are Let's see, 
um, let's let's say you're starting a new business, okay, and your business is your passion, and or you're taking your passion and you're wanting to make that a business, okay. So the overall energy of it is that this is your passion and you are uplifted by it and you're excited by it and you're inspired by it and you are motivated by it. However, there are going to be days or instances or moments when you feel a burden of responsibility because it's it's a lot of work. There are things that you're going to have to learn along the path that maybe you're not good at and you don't really have interest in, but they are part of the larger picture. Okay, so being mindful, and so we don't just abandon the business because we have to do some bookkeeping and, and maybe that's not our forte. Maybe that's, we have no interest in that. We recognize that that feeling is only, we don't, if we attribute too much meaning to that particular point in time, of the greater experience, then we lose the magnificence of the greater experience. Okay, so ooh, that was a roundabout way to say taking the um, higher perspective here and as well as feeling into your body. How am I feeling? And am I assigning a meaning to that that is not um, taking into consideration the higher perspective? And so that's what I'm getting from the Four of Pentacles and the Four of Cups. It's this, um, and I'm kind of getting this as uh, past energy for you, even though it's external factors, but I think external in this has a lot to do with um, how you may have interacted with external factors, either interpersonal relationships, whether they're whether or specifically interpersonal relationships, whether they be fam family, friends, um, romantic partners, business partners. Um, and so this recalibration that's happening for you is going to allow you to move into a new energetic and emotional landscape in these interpersonal relationships. Okay, water signs, I am going to leave it there. This was rather long. I didn't intend it to be, but I hope that you found it helpful. And I hope that there were messages in here that will help you um, along this process. It's a beautiful process that's unfolding for you. It does require you to trust in your guides, in your higher self, in the angels. Um, but you are thoroughly capable of this and you are heavily protected and guided along the way. So thank you so much for your time, your attention. If you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you staying with me through the whole thing. Um, your openness to the messages. If you're interested in a personal reading, my information is in the description box below. And I hope you have a wonderful full moon in Leo. I wish you all the best and I will be back soon. Thank you so much.